There is a new armor set being introduced with the Steel Dawn DLC, but how good is it? How can you get it? And is it worth the grind? Let me show you everything. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In this feature overview, I will tell you everything you need to know about the new Brotherhood of Steel Recon Armor, including how to get the plants, the base stats, mods and other important facts you should know. Then I will proceed to compare the defense of the Recon Armor with the Secret Service. I will test the Radiation Defense, Energy and Physical Defense as well. In the end I will give you my honest opinion about the armor differences and whether or not it's worth grinding this new Steel Dawn armor set. With that being said, let's do this! Alright, so how to put your hands on this new faction armor set? Well, first of all, let me warn you, it won't be an easy task. No, no, no. Actually, to get a full set of legendary pieces, the ones you want, that will be close to impossible. But before we get there, you can get your recon armor plans from Daily Ops, easily said. The reward pool is drastically expanding with the Steel Dawn DLC. Bethesda is adding most Brotherhood new weapons and the entire recon set to the Daily Ops rewards. Before the update we had only 9 rare plants, each one had a 3.5% chance to drop in Elder Mode. Now we have a total of 23, which means the chance to loot rare plants per Daily Ops is around 1%. Ouch. Now let's not forget your chance to roll a rare plan while finishing in Elder Mode is only 30%. So, just there you have a true grinding process to obtain the six armor plans, of course. I know the helmet doesn't count as armor, but you can get the plan there as well for the complete look. Now, as all the other gear plans from Daily Ops, these are also untradeable. You cannot sell, drop, or gift to any of your friends. Once you learn all the plans, you can only craft it as normal items. The model is not a Wastelanders, where you could use legendary modules to craft random legendaries per plan learned. In here, things are the opposite. You can only craft normal pieces and they are also untradeable. So how can you get legendary recon armor pieces? Well, according to the data miners, you can only roll them at the Prevere or roll them at the Daily Ops rewards through the power of RNG. So even the event rewards cannot give you legendary recon armor pieces, it seems like. There is no percentage I can give you here, but as you can imagine, it's very, very low. We will get back to this topic later on at the final overview. Let's move on to the mods now. In order to get your Brotherhood Recon Armor mods, all you have to do is head to Vault 79. For new players, you need to go through the Wastelanders questline first in order to access this vault, so that's how you can get in. Anyway, you can find all the available mods at Rex for similar prices than the Secret Service Agency mods. Right now it's all one gold because this was recorded at the public test server. Apart from a few bugs, you can expect to unlock the same mods as you have for the secret service. There's even a jetpack and a matching set helmet, which you can obviously craft and add to your recon armor. So in this regard, Bethesda did a fine job. They are allowing us to unlock all the recon armor mods with cold bullion. Very, very good. Now, what about the stats? How do both armors differ from one another? Should you upgrade your secret service armor to the recon one? Well, let me help you find the answer. Let's compare the stats first and then proceed to the damage tests. I'm looking forward to presenting you the results. Most veteran players are now using the Wastelander's Secret Service Armor, first because it's the best armor in-game in terms of defense, at least, secondly because it's the easiest armor to obtain as legendary, and while overall it's a very good armor to play with, it doesn't look very good, but hey, it does an excellent job at keeping you alive. At least that. Now, with the Brotherhood Recon Armor, the question is, should you upgrade? Well, let's take a look at the base stats first, side by side. The difference is not much. The Recon Armor has superior physical defense, 50 more per set to be precise. However, it has 60 less radiation 
and energy damage. So in total, it gives you 50 more defense in the physical tab and removes 120 defense, rads and energy together. This trade-off might sound strange if you look just at the numbers. I mean, you lose double the defense just for some more physical in return. It really doesn't seem worth the trade-off to me, just based on this fact, but it's always nice and wise to see how the numbers translate into reality, into the gameplay. Anyway, before we move forward, I crafted a legendary set for the secret service armor to compare both sets, and I choose only effects that do not interfere with defense. So I ended up with a bunch of regenerating, auto sim and mutant pieces. The character I am using has no mutations or defense perks on. I also didn't use any mods. I tried my best to do a base stats test. With that being said, let's begin with the damage test. I started with the radiation defense because it's the easiest one to test. There are many radiation sources in the wasteland and I first tested both armor sets at the Fisher site. Here's the side-by-side -side comparison. It's no surprise that the recon armor is allowing a little bit more radiation to get in. The max rads I got there was 6 per second, in contrast with the secret service which allowed a maximum of 5 rads per second. The first test is rather inconclusive, I mean one radiation damage difference is nothing. So I moved on to the abandoned waste dump and tested both armor sets again. The results were more conclusive this time, I ran around the barrels and the average rads at the hotspots were 9 to 12 for the recon armor, 3 more than the average for the secret service which was 7 to 10 rads per second. So in this case the 60 radiation difference is quite noticeable, but then again it makes sense. The higher the radiation damage, the more noticeable will be the defense performance. After all, 60 defense is a decent amount. I also tested the Amet disposal site, far worse than a nuked area, and once again the recon armor took a little bit more damage. I mean, the difference is not very perceptible since you are taking around 50 damage per second on both armors, but still, if you take a closer look, the difference per second is around 3 to 5 rads. Well, each time it increases, it's, well, very fast, but I can notice it. I also decided to test this defense on some enemies, such as feral ghouls, and the results were confusing. Both armors allow the same amount of rads from level 50 and 53 feral ghouls. And I did conduct several tests here, and in all of them they always inflicted 15 to 20 rads per hit, depending on their levels. I'm not sure why this happens though, it could be due to a bug or something else. Maybe their attacks have anti-armor and penetrate radiation defense as well, I'm not sure here. I'd have to look more into this matter. Anyway, there is no doubt here that the secret service armor does a much better job at protecting you from environmental radiation though. As for enemy radiation damage, I'm not quite sure. But overall, it should do a much better job than the recon armor. I mean, 60 damage is not like we are talking about 10 or 20, it's 60, and that's quite significant. Next, let's go over the energy defense. There's also a 60 gap between the recon and the secret service armors. So by default, the latest should ensure you receive less energy damage at any time. Is it true though? Well, since there are no damage numbers from enemies, it's not so easy to provide a solid answer. For weaker enemies, such as protectons or laser goodsies, I must confess I hardly noticed any difference. My HP bar barely moved with both armor sets, as you can see. The Robo Brain Tesla doesn't seem to do a lot of damage at first, but it's here where the recon armor starts to fall behind. With the Secret Service, I can take several energy hits without a problem. With the recon, though, that's not so easy. Now, Super Mutants deal slightly more damage per energy hit in general. I noticed this one the most, I think, because I do fight Super Mutants all the time on a daily basis. But again, the difference is very, very small. On the other hand, if you fight the ultimate energy enemy, such as Blood Eagles with heavy lasers, 
both armors will let you down. Your HP gets depleted in a matter of seconds. So I don't think the 60 energy defense matters that much. For radiation, the defense changes between armors is quite noticeable. For energy, I think it's not as much. Probably because energy enemies are not as common as physical ones or even radiation sources, which are basically everywhere you go. Don't get me wrong, there are differences of course, and the secret service wins once again, but at the end of the day, you shouldn't choose a certain armor type just because it decreases energy damage by 2% or something alike, because in this case, the difference is very, very small. Well, now it's time for the ultimate test. Let's get physical here. I mean, the Recon Armor set has an upper hand of 50 more defense than the Secret Service, so by default the Recon Armor should protect you better from most enemies in the Wasteland, since, well, the majority deals physical damage. I started with robots once again, their melee attacks hurt, but hey, they hurt way more with the Secret Service. Quite a difference there, as you can see, I hope. <laughs> The Robobrain's melee continued to be deadly, but I also felt less damage per hit with the Recon Armor. When it comes to Mr. Goodseas, the Recon Armor wins by far. Just look at that, I am a bullet sponge without legendaries or defense perks. This Goodsea is not hurting me at all. I even let these sentry bots spam hits on me and I survived just fine. That was an impressive event and it proves 50 more physical defense really matters. Now in contrast, the secret service armor allows you more damage per bullet from Goodseas. I think the difference here is at least 25% more inflicted damage while compared with Recons. I usually die to Goodseas with my bloodied build, they are quite strong enemies. When it comes to Scorched, it's the exact same. The Recon armor absorbs a bit more damage as it's supposed to. What about Super Mutants? Well, when it comes to melee hits, the light ones are about the same in both armors, but when it comes to heavy attacks, the Recon armors absorb way more damage than the Secret Service, for some reason. I guess the more damage they deal, the more it absorbs, therefore the higher is the difference. I decided to tank several Super Mutants and no doubt the Recon armor performs better. In fact, there were three enemies on me for the recon footage and only two on the secret service and as you can see, I ended up with about the same HP on both tests, even though I was tanking one more enemy with the recon armor. Now, Blood Eagles also deal less damage to the recon armor set. It's a solid rule by now. The 50 extra defense does indeed matter for humanoid and robots at least. What about creatures? I tested gulpers and surprisingly, the difference here was hardly noticeable. The three hits done by the same gulper dealt about the same damage in total. My final test was with a behemoth. I said it right this time, guys. Don't criticize me. I mean, go ahead, criticize me. I'm always learning. And what annoys me the most, I know this is off topic, but I know how to say a lot of words, but I end up saying them wrong for some reason. It's like my lips don't sync with my brain. And yeah, never mind. Let's keep going. <laughs> I wanted to see if there was any substantial difference. And well, there are. It took him four hits to kill me with both armors, so there is no difference there. However, However, if you pay a closer look at the HP bar, I got way more damage per hit with the Secret Service armor. So once again, the Recon armor is indeed superior against physical damage. The difference is not abysmal for sure, but it's very noticeable. So if you fight physical enemies all the time, this armor is for you. You should definitely go for it because the other two defenses don't matter that much to you, you know the difference is very small but when it comes to physical i think it's very very noticeable that 50 physical defense translates into something really meaningful and at the end of the day that might as well save you from dying a couple of times every now and then 
Before we jump into the final conclusion, I want to show you the recon armor with some mods. What you just saw was the test of base stats, which means both armors can become much stronger with mods. I decided to use the strongest one, but rest for the primary mod and then the lead line for the secondary for that extra radiation defense you really needed here. And well, after modding every single piece, this is the final result. I ended up with 372 physical defense, 224 energy defense and 254 radiation defense. That's some decent numbers. Don't forget the armor is not legendary and there are no mutations or defense perks active either. So if you get your hands on an unwielding set or vanguards for example you can easily boost it to 500 physical defense and that's amazing overall this armor can become much much stronger than what you just saw so the question remains is the new brotherhood recon armor worth the grind I mean, you will need to spend weeks, if not months, grinding for it, unless you are super super lucky or take easy paths through cheating. I will give you two types of answer, because honestly speaking, it depends on your perspective. If you consider the base stats, I would say yes, this armor is worth the upgrade. The 50 extra physical defense does make a difference, and since most enemies deal physical defense, it's worth sacrificing the 50 energy and radiation damage in general. It's a fair trade-off. So if you intend on playing for mounts, this might be your new quest until the next DLC. You will surely have plenty of weeks and mounts to farm for this new armor set. On the other hand, if you consider all the time and effort you need to get what you want, plus you're already burned out from the game, then just forget it. Keep your secret server set and that's it. It works wonders and it's not like the recon set is much better. Just think with me here. Let's say you want to get a full unwielding recon armor set with dozens of possible armor types and legendary effects to roll. It wouldn't surprise me if the chance is something like 0001% to get the specific item you want. Now, unless you do dozens and dozens of daily ops per day, I think that's going to be close to impossible to get, at least according to the numbers. Don't forget, public events can't roll legendaries for the recon armor for some reason, so it's going to be a slow run for most of us. Moving on, I think the secret servers is more balanced overall, and for some builds, sacrificing energy and rad defense for physical is not ideal. For example, I am using the high capacity backpack mod and it reduces my defenses, so I don't think I want to switch to recon, especially when I know it's a nightmare to grind for. I am generally unlucky with Prevere and event rolls, and in this case you need a lot of luck to get what you need or want, so I'm better off keeping low expectations. If it ends up happening, great, amazing, spectacular. If not, I have my good old secret server set and I'm happy with it. So should you, if you have one. New things are not always better, and in this case it can be better for some, but it doesn't have to be better for everyone out there. Well, I hope this helps you decide whether or not you want to farm a recon armor set. I provided all the available facts and details you should know for now, as well as my opinion. I am Arte Branku, thank you so much for choosing my content, and that's it for this one. Don't forget to leave a like to let YouTube know you enjoyed it, and if you're not subscribed yet, well, make sure to do so, it's free and it helps me a lot. Now, I am working on my Fallout for Hope stream event happening mid-December, I will share more details later this month, so stay tuned for more. As usual, thanks to all my dear members and patrons for their continued support, and I will see you all very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.